folks, it's Abel, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my silhouette pieces. I started doing silhouette pieces about four years ago, really close to the start of the shop itself. But because I was on a different platform and I was still figuring things out, I ended up having it set up in a bit of a confusing way that wasn't super great, and I had people accidentally ordering silhouettes that didn't want to, and they were paying extra for that, and I had to deal with refunds, and then I had to deal with people who wouldn't answer their emails when I asked them if they wanted to do it a certain way, or it wouldn't respond to me talking about the email. Oh, it was, uh, it was a lot and it was annoying. And from the sounds I am making, you can tell that I was frustrated and still am four years later. So the solution, I took it out of the shop. I didn't make them anymore. I did do a couple as charity pieces, which was kind of cool. I really liked how they were turning out. And the more I did those charity pieces, the more I realized I kind of missed making these because they turn out so sick. So I decided that it was going to be a limited item, and that means that every few months, probably every three or four, I'll offer a set amount of silhouettes in the shop for a limited time, and it'll either end when they're sold out or that time is over. So usually I go with 10 so that I only have 10 to do because they are a little bit more work, and it's really nice to just be able to do that set amount, know I'm done, and know I won't have to deal with any more emails, and it's all over, and it's wonderful, and it's good. I can do silhouettes two ways. First, the one we're doing today, where it's more the regular silhouette in my mind, where the figure holds the song within it. So I have a person, and then the song is within their silhouette. Or we have what I consider an inverted silhouette, where we have the figure, and they are on top of the song, essentially. And they're a solid shape, but we're not doing that today. It is essentially the same process, though. I just paint the background a solid color on the regular, and I paint the figure the solid color in the inverted. I always start by painting the song. This time, we're going to be doing Ego by BTS, because my roommate really loves BTS, y'all, and she's got hype, and I got hype, and she's trying to order tickets, and it's a nightmare, and I'm having a good time, and she is crying at her computer because Ticketmaster is scary. And it's been a whole thing, so I decided to paint this, because you know what, we all need a little cheer up, and nothing like a little J-Hope to make you happy. Now that we have the song painted, it's time to work on the actual silhouette process. Because if we don't do the silhouette process, that's just how I paint a song. Ta-da! The end. The easiest way I found to do this is instead of freehanding, which causes me to miss a lot of detail and sometimes be a little bit inaccurate because while I think I'm an okay artiste when it comes to drawing, I'm not amazing and I will miss pieces and it won't be perfect. So, in order to get that good, clean silhouette with as much detail as possible, I take my laptop, I turn it on to its brightest setting, and I use my reference photo to trace it out. Because that's what's going to be easiest and that's what's going to look best. I would like to take a quick moment to shout out Brooke for choosing this silhouette photo because I didn't know what I was going to work on. I didn't know what kind of shape I wanted. I wasn't sure. I didn't have a ton of vision for this. And she decided that this still from the music video would be really, really good. And I agreed. We're doing this on a 9x6 paper. There are upper and lower limits to what I will do this on because it's just trying to do it on a miniature 2x3 inch canvas. That's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be sloppy. It's going to be ugly. And trying to do it on something really, really big is also going to be kind of difficult. Because for a large piece, I decided a little while ago that I'm just going to do it the easiest way I know how. And the easiest way I know how is. I'm going to take a lot of paper, tape it together in a little grid, tape that paper to the TV, plug my laptop into an HDMI cord, and then trace it from there. It is a mess, and I hope my neighbors never see me do it through the window because I look ridiculous trying to trace this. In a perfect dream world, I would have a projector, but that is not in the snazzy starlight budget, and that's okay because I have this wild way that works still and it's fine. It's just that 16 by 20 is going to be my upper limit for now because it's a bit of a mess. Now, with smaller details on this tracing situation as I'm cutting it out, because cutting it out, you got to have a template. That's what we're making is we're making a stencil here. It's going to be great. It's going to be perfect. It's just that Cutting out little details, if y'all have ever tried to cut out any sort of cut-and-paste situation, they're very hard to do with scissors. 
And sometimes, even with an X-Acto knife, it's a little bit difficult, and I don't like to take that risk. So I don't always cut out the entirety of the small details, especially if they're in the center of the paper and it's kind of a little peekaboo situation, keyhole look. And it just, it doesn't work, and it's hard. So that's fine. It's okay. For tracing it, the biggest thing is to just keep the paper still on the painting so that I'm not going to jostle it around and mess up my lines. And that is something I've gotten pretty good at, if I do say so myself. Just keeping that paper in a good spot, making sure that it's totally fine, doesn't move so it doesn't smudge you. I also like to use mechanical pencil because I think that it is a little bit cleaner, it's a little less sloppy, you're less likely to smudge, and you don't have as much variance in line width as you do with a pencil, which wears down and like kind of changes as you use it. There's still a little bit, but it helps you get a nice clean line, and that's something that I really, really strive for with these. Now, the thing with the little details. I will, instead of cutting it out and instead of trying to do it that way, just take that paper and I will put my pencil on it. And this is another perk of mechanical pencil because it's so small that I think it works a little bit better than a more blunt type of pencil. I press it as hard as humanly possible without tearing the paper over the line so that it will leave a very, very slight indent in the paper below it. This works a lot better on acrylic paper than it does on canvas, but it works really, really well either way. So that's really, really nice and that's the best trick I've got. And then once I pull back the paper, the indent is right there and I can just trace it with the pencil and it's amazing. It's probably one of the best tricks I've ever come up with for that kind of thing, and I'm so stoked because it works so well. And with that, we have an app. And next is the part that takes the longest. I need to make sure that the background is nice and solid so the song can really pop. So first, I like to go in with a little detail brush and get those itty bitty little areas, like the one that's under the umbrella but above J-Hope's arm. I use a detail brush because a big brush is big. It doesn't fit. And the detail brush offers a lot more precision, and it's really, really nice for that. I also like to use the detail brush to then start outlining the figure so that I can get a nice, clear line around it, and then I can go in with the big boy. The big brush is really nice for covering out bigger areas. I mean, it's a big brush. It's what it does. So I like to go in then with the bigger one and then just shove it all over the big spots. It can be a little bit hectic. It's nice. It's good. You get to be chaotic, and that is what I'm all about here. I love to just fill in the big areas. I get really stressed when I'm doing the detailing and the outline because that's the part that if you mess it up, it's going to be hard to fix because you can try to cover it, but then the paint might not blend in really well with the song, and it just looks kind of garish and bad because everything's dry there, and you don't want it to and once you try to put wet paint over dry paint, it looks awkward, and I don't know. It's just very stressful for me, and I don't like it, and it scares me. So being able to go a little bit nuts with that big brush feels real, real good right after I finish an outline. I also really like to work in sections. I started with the right side on this one, and it's nice because the silhouette's right in the center, and it goes right through. So it gives me the chance to do the right side and then the left. Which means that while I'm doing the left side, the right side is drying, and by the time I finish the left side, I can go through and add another coat on the right, which is super awesome because it lets me just continue working, and that's really nice for, like, my train of focus is not very good. So, if I break it, it's a problem. But, if I just keep on going through and making sure I get it done, it's really, really good and means that I'm gonna finish in a time that makes sense. And that means you guys don't have to wait when you order them, so that's really, really nice. Because the paint I use is pretty thin, it's a really low body acrylic, it doesn't always dry fully opaque is the word I'm looking for. And that means that I need to go over it a couple times, which is great. And the more layers you have, the more it's going to take for it to dry down. It's just going to be a little bit longer. So this is a good time once you finish up the first couple layers, take yourself a potty break. 
And once you come back from your potty break, you can work on touch-up. It was just a, the littlest bit patchy in just a couple areas. So I fixed that up and boom bam, solid background bibby. While I was working on this, I had the thought because I have a white gel pen that I love. And it was just sitting right next to me and I had the thought of doing a couple itty bitty little doodles. And I would not normally do that, not for a commission, because I don't want to mess with what a client wants. But this wasn't for a commission. This was for me. This was made specifically for this video so I could show you guys what the silhouettes entail. And I thought maybe I would put it up for auction. Brooke decided that that was not going to happen, and she decided that was hers, and that is okay. She went through the stress of buying us BTS tickets today, so Brooke gets what Brooke wants. So, <laughs> it was not an auction piece, but it ended up going to broke, and I decided to just have some fun and do some little doodles. I have a bullet journal, and in that, I'm constantly just doodling little suns and planets and stars, and that's what you got. It was really, really fun. It was, I don't know, it just, there was something really cute to it that I loved the look, and it finished out really well, and if it hadn't finished out really well, maybe I would have been more upset, and maybe I wouldn't have done it again, but... Now I just want to do a whole set of these things for all the members, and that's going to be really cute. And that was partially inspired by Brooke saying I should do it, and partially inspired by the piece of my heart that really loves matching sets of things. So, I might do another with doodles, but for commissions, it's not really something I do. If someone wanted me to, wouldn't be opposed, but it's not something I really would do to someone and force them to have it. Because, you know, I want to make sure that clients get what clients want. And speaking of what clients want, I've been getting a lot of comments recently saying that I need to do a silhouette run again, and that means I'm going to do a silhouette run again. So, February 7th, 8th, and 9th, I will be doing 10 commission slots, which means tomorrow, if you're watching the video when it comes out, I will be taking 10 commission slots. There are only 10 available because they're a lot more work, as you probably have seen while I've been doing this. So there's only a few, but if you want it, you can get it. And if you don't get it this time, they'll be back in a few more months. I try to do them pretty frequently, but they're a lot. As you can see, they take a hot second to work on, and there's just a lot of precision to it, and it takes me a little while. But they're there, and I have fun with them, and if you want one, they're there. But even if you don't buy anything, and even if you don't join Patreon, you know what matters a lot? You just sitting down and watching this. Thank you so much. I will see you again in another two weeks. I love you and goodbye.